So let's have a look at this first puppy here. And if you are just loading up, um, you know, maybe actually, if you haven't got your PDF, uh, just, just hit pause. It's okay. Uh, all the information that you need is in front of you on the screen. Let's just have a look at this one question. Now, what do we use, or how do we use, I should say, the fundamental theorem of calculus to answer this question? Well, I'm going to say, look, that 2x in there, that's the f of x that I'm now going to find the primitive of. What's the function that when I differentiate it, gives me that, okay? So I'm gonna to have to reverse everything that I knew from differentiation to integrate this. I'm going to put in my square brackets to indicate the thing inside is my primitive function. Um, and hopefully some of you are following along and you know what the primitive of 2x is. It's going to be x squared, right? I feel like Dora the Explorer when she's like, hey everyone, where would you like to go? And she's just like talking to a silent camera. She's not even a real character. Anyway, what am I talking about? Now you get your x squared there. That's the primitive, but we're not finished yet. We have to have our lower and our upper bounds, one and four on the outside there. And what they indicate is, I'm going to evaluate the endpoint, which is four, and I'm gonna subtract that from evaluating the start point, which is one. So that's gonna look like this, four squared take away one squared. So if you go back to the fundamental theorem of calculus that you put a big box around, um, this is the f of b take away the f of a, that's the part that I'm evaluating here. Now I know a lot of you will be like, lol, I don't need to write four squared and one squared. I know what those are equal to. Um, that's fine, but I'm just gonna say to you right now, this substitution step is going to save you a lot in the future. Um, we, we're obviously not gonna be dealing with just simple functions like this. Sometimes they're quite terrible and messy. And if you get something wrong and you just simplify it in your head and you write down the number, like say 16 or one. And if you get that incorrect, you have no way to work out what's gone wrong because you're like, I don't know, there's just a number there. Is it correct or not? I've just got to do the question all over again. So even though four squared is a value I know and you know, I'm going to write four squared down anyway, then I'm going to actually simplify that and I get a number at the end. Now at this point here, I will ask all of you to have a quick look at the textbook and I'll even pull it up here. Here's my answers where I was checking things. Uh, or what page do I need to be on? I think it's around 23, isn't it? 23, 22, all right, here we go. Now, at this point we do actually need to quickly look at the question because the question's wording is very important to us. It says, evaluate the following definite integrals using the fundamental theorem. Now. This is important that we read this carefully because when we had a look at the questions that Mrs. Lees gave to us before, they were all couched in terms of area. Now we can use area to verify that this answer 15 is correct. Let me show you, I've um, graphed this guy already here. This is 2x and I'm having a look at it from one all the way over to four. And I can actually quickly verify that the answer of 15 does make sense. Let's uh, do a similar kind of approach to how Mrs. Lees did it before. I can break this up into a rectangle. Um, I've conveniently made all of the squares unit squares. So um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's the area of your rectangle down the bottom. Um, when I have a look at the triangle on the top, you can see that the width of it is three. The height of it is, let's count that up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Height is six, so base times height on two is 18 on two, so it gives me an area of nine. Nine plus six gives me the 15 that I saw before. But if I just come back to this original question now, this answer of 15 is not 15 units squared. It's not an area. Have a look at the question. It just says evaluate an integral. That's just a number. Um, often that number is useful to work out an area and we can use an area to help us work out the number, but the actual definite integral itself is just the number 15. So that's it, we're done. Now, this guy here, I picked this one as an example because we could verify it very simply with an area because you end up with something nice and neat, uh, a rectangle across a, a top of triangle or other way around. You could have done the trapezium formula for this too. But it doesn't take long before you start looking at things where you're like, I have no idea what kind of formula I should use. There's no other choice but to use calculus here. So let's have a go at this one. It's 4e. I'm just gonna continue the working directly underneath. Now, just like before, I'm gonna use the fundamental theorem by first saying I need to know what the primitive function is of this guy in here, 4x cubed plus five. That's um, called the integrand, by the way, if you're looking for the technical term, wrong color. This guy here is called the integrand. Now, they've given us pretty easy numbers for this first part of the exercise, 4x cubed, what is the, uh, 
primitive function of just that part of it, that's going to be x to the power of four, right? Did you say four to your, to your screen? Thank you, Hamza. Okay, wonderful. I'm very proud of you. Um, x to the power of four. Uh, that's the first part. I've got a plus five. That's even easier to integrate. It's just going to be, thank you, Eddie. You beat me to the punch. Five x. So that's the whole primitive. And now I'm going to evaluate it from negative one up to two. Now I picked out this particular example because these negative numbers, um, they're going to come up a lot. And because we already have subtraction happening inside these brackets, um, you're just asking for problems if you don't be careful with where your brackets are, where you evaluate things. Like I said, this is why that uh, substitution step is so useful. Let's do that right now. I'm going to do the, uh, the upper bound and then I'm going to subtract that from the lower bound. So what have I got here? I've got x to the power of 4, that's 2 to the power of 4 plus 5 lots of 2. That's my f of b, if you like, and I'll subtract that from f of a. And maybe some of you are already ahead of me and have actually evaluated this already. Uh, there's my f of b on the left hand side, my f of a on the right hand side. And now I actually know these numbers. I encourage you by the way at this point to not rely on your calculator. Come on, use your brain there. Um, that's not by the way, that's not just me being mean. Um, it is also a really important way to keep on uh, having those arithmetic muscles fresh. You'll be so much better at actually identifying problems um, and errors in your own working if you can look at it rather than relying on a calculator. So 2 to the 4 is 16. 5 lots of 2 is 10. I'm going to subtract negative 1, multiply by itself uh, 4 lots, that's 1. And then I'm going to add negative 5. That gives me 26 on the left-hand side. I'm subtracting, okay, careful here, 1 plus negative 5, 1 plus negative 5, that's negative 4, right? And then when I have those double negatives, I'm going to get 26 plus 4, which is 30. Okay, now I'm sort of uh, a little nervous because I'm looking at the comments and wondering if anyone's got there. I thought I saw a 20 before, but maybe someone deleted that um, because I can't find it anymore. Do I get some agreement? Can I get some um, thumbs up, some happies, unhappies? What do you guys reckon? Thank you, Rahul. Fantastic, Kevin. Much appreciated. Okay, happy times. So. A quick note, um, some people, I think, I think someone said something about the, the plus C. Where'd that go, right? Um, this constant of integration, right? Why doesn't it appear? And I see Mrs. Liz has already put it in there. So in case you can't quite see um, that there in her comments, if I were to put the plus C in here, let's actually put it where we normally would, which is when we integrate. There's the constant of integration, okay? What will happen is when I do my F of B and my F of A, you might notice that plus C appears in both of them. Um, the plus C as a constant, it's independent of X. So when X equals negative one, C is still C. And when X is equal to two, C is still C. So you, you can see that the plus C here and the plus C here, they're just gonna cancel out, right? And you can see that again in Mrs. Lee's very carefully written out working. So we get an answer of 30. All right. Happy times. That was a little more involved, but again, um, I actually reckon the devil's in the details here. The calculus is often not the hard part. That was the easy part at the beginning. You're like, oh, x to the 4 plus 5x, you can do that straight away. But you've got to be very careful with your actual numbers there.